The Crying of Lot 49 is a 1966 novel by Thomas Pynchon. It focuses on the adventures of Oedipa Mass, a young woman who may or may not have uncovered an underground postal conspiracy. It is definitely a bizarre book. The author of it, Thomas Pynchon, is a notoriously reclusive American author. Very little is known about his life past his adolescence, and as such, I cannot provide much background here. But from what I've read of him, most of his major works, he's a fantastic writer. I would highly recommend checking out his work sometime if you're into complex, difficult literature. As mentioned previously, the plot centers around postal conspiracies. The book opens with Oedipa Mass, the woman I mentioned earlier, becoming the executor, or executrix, as she's referred to in the novel, of the estate of Pierce in Verarity, her former lover. After a series of convoluted events and connections, she notices a sign called a muted post horn, seen on the cover shown in the background of this video, graffitied in the wall, with the acronym WASTE written under it. This leads her on a hunt to uncover what's behind these symbols, which ends up, maybe it's not made clear in the novel, being associated with two mail services known as Tristero and Thern Und Taxis, the latter of which being a real company, which were involved in a mysterious underground mail service. The plot gets increasingly complex from here, but I will refrain from spoiling it. But basically, don't go into this novel expecting resolution and a conclusion of the various novels brought up in it, mi mysteries brought up in it, as you're not going to receive those. It's left intentionally vague whether any of this is even happening in the reality of the book. I personally think those aspects of the novel are a plus, but if you enjoy more standard books, I can understand being frustrated by those. One of the main things Pynchon is praised for is his prose, which is absolutely present in this book. The way it's written is somewhat of an intermediate between incredibly difficult novels like Ulysses and more standard books like, well, most of them ever written. Despite being easier than some of his later works, such as Gravity's Rainbow and Mason and Dixon, which are also incredible, it is still a challenge. However, it is a very rewarding one. The prose, despite often being dense and confusing, especially in some of the later sections of the book, where Edipa is, so to speak, losing her mind, it is absolutely beautiful to read. Many of his sentences, in this and his other works, are among the best in literature. His writing style is one of the main reasons I'd recommend his books. The book is also complex in other ways, such as plot and themes, but the prose is definitely the biggest hurdle to understanding the book. The major theme of the book is paranoia. Most of the characters, especially Edipa, are entrenched in one or another form of paranoia. An indie rock band featured prominently in the book is even called the Paranoids. The theme is explored extensively and well throughout the novel, such as in a fantastic scene laid in the book where Oedipal wanders through the city, experiencing a mental breakdown and seeing muted post horns everywhere. However, paranoia is not the only prominent motif present. Another prominent one is aimlessness, as many characters throughout it, including the protagonist, drift through life without clear purpose. At least until Oedipal discovers her alleged purpose, which is to uncover what's behind Tristero. Another element of the book's theming is its setting in mid-1960s America. The political atmosphere of the time contributes a great deal to the general mood of the book. The characters in this book aren't well developed in the traditional sense, but that is somewhat of a staple among Pynchon's novels, and a good one considering the style of books he writes. The majority of his characters are more so archetypal, functional, or comedic, compared to being fully formed people. This serves his work, though, and I imagine his books would feel quite different with extremely deep characters. The majority of his novels, including this one, focus more on the plot and themes of themselves compared to the characters. I will say, though, this, like most of his other books, does still have quite a few memorable and entertaining characters, such as Dr. Hilarious and Mike Fallopian. Yes, all of his characters are named like this. No, it's not a bad thing. Dr. Hilarious is actually a good example of one of his archetypal characters. The character is a German therapist, later revealed to have previously been a Nazi doctor, who uses drugs heavily in his attempts to help people. He is almost completely insane and has very little depth as a character, but the majority of his purpose in the novel is to contribute to the themes of the book, and that's said to be a fully formed person. The humor is also pretty great in this book. It isn't constant, and there are stretches without much of it, but when it appears, it's very funny, and definitely helps to lighten the tone of an otherwise quite dour book. In conclusion, The Crying of Lot 49 is a really good book, which I highly recommend. It's fairly difficult, but it's very rewarding if you can push, push through the challenge. If you're someone who enjoys postmodernist and experimental literature, definitely check this one out. Thanks for watching this.